Let's take a descent. look on the commonly used optimizer. Almost all popular optimizer in deep learning are based on gradient descents. Which is um, which estimate the slopes of a given loss functions and update the parameters towards a supposed global minimum. There are, there are three different types of gradient descent. Um, the first one is the batch gradient descent or the vanilla gradient descent. That means the entire database are used to compute the gradients uh, of the call, for the cost functions. And then for each, uh, that is for each iterations. And then the gradient descent will try to update the parameters based on the entire data set. And the other one is the um, stochastic uh, gradient descent. In this case, a single sample, a sample is randomly picked and used to compute the gradients of the cost function. And then for each, each, each iterations, the gradient descent will update the uh, parameters. And the final one is the mini batch gradient descent. Um, this is a variation of the stochastic gradient descent. A mini batch of the samples is randomly picked. And that means this is a, a subset of the entire data set and used it to compute the gradients of the cost functions for each iterations of the gradient descent and then updates the parameter. The problems of the batch gradient descent or vanilla gradient descent is that because it takes the entire database into consideration for the training. As a result, it will slow down the training and the training will be extremely slowed. On the other hand, the stochastic uh, gradient descent because it only takes one sample. Therefore, the the training will be uh, very fluctuated. In that case, it's very difficult for us to judge whether or not we reach a global minimum. Therefore, very often, we will use the mini batch gradient descent to take a balance between, uh, between these two types of gradient descent. Let's take a look on some commonly used optimizer. Let's denote the parameters equals to W, the gradients equals to G, the global learning rates equals to alpha, the times that equals to time T. And we have the first one uh, that I would like to introduce is the stochastic gradient descent. As uh, this SGD functions is, uh, although it's called the stochastic gradient descent, is actually applying the mini batch gradient descent. The optimizer estimate the directions of the steepest descent based on the batch size defined in the fit functions and take a step in that direction. However, the step size is fixed. That means even though it got the right directions, the step size is fixed. Therefore, SGD can quickly get stuck on the plateau or local minima. And update rules, you can see that um, just simply use the global learning rate here, the alpha, um, with the times the gradient to control how much that we would like to update the parameter. Just like what I mentioned, these alpha and these gradient descent, the, the step size is fixed. Therefore, it's very easy for it to get stuck on the plateau or the local minima. In that case, we would like to introduce a momentum to these SGD functions to make it accelerate in the directions of the constant descent. That means if it predicts it correctly to the, to the global minima or the local minima, it will speed up the training. It will speed up to, into that directions with the momentum. The acceleration is defined by the momentum beta, which is less than one, which helps the model escape the plateau or escape the local minima and make it ease much more easier to escape from that, uh, from that problem. And you can see that the update rule, instead of just use the learning rates multiplied by the 
gradient, now we multiply by a velocity. And this velocity is controlled by the momentum term beta, and of course, is controlled by the gradient. If we are going, if we set the beta equals to zero, equals to zero, the first equations will just get um, the gradient time, gradient t, and as a result, uh, it will uh, it will be same as the uh, sg the original sgd. So if we set this set the momentum terms equals to zero, and then the sgd will be without the momentum. In Keras, the SGD functions uh, combines the SGD without and with the momentum. So we can just simply set this momentum value. When the momentum is larger than zero, SGD functions will up, up, update the gradient with the velocity equations here. Therefore, the hyperparameters beta here must be within zero and one. There are two challenges when we are applying the SGD functions. Um, the challenge mainly coming from the learning rate. First of all, is that the learning rate has to be set in advance, um, and they de ha depend heavily on the types of the models and also the problem. Another problem is that the same learning rate is applied throughout the entire training. In that case, if the data is sparse, it's better to be updated the parameters at different rates. And ADA grade um, make use of the adaptive learning rate to address these issue. It scales the learning rate alpha for each parameters based on the square root of the inverse sum of the squared gradient that is based on these two equations here. So in, some, uh, in, in short, these methods will scale the sparse gradient's direction up, which allows for larger steps in such directions. That means when it saw there, there are a, a sparse gradient, it will just step up in that direction and result a faster converge into the problems with sparse features. And because of that, you can see from the update rule, now the learning rate is controlled by the sparse features and make it to uh, learn, learn it adaptively. Ada gradient's main problem is that its accumulations of the square gradients is in the denominator. The accumulated sums keep going during the training. This in turn causes the learning rates to shrink and eventually becomes very inefficient at the point that it is no longer able to acquire additional uh, knowledge. To solve this uh, radically diminishing learning rate, we will introduce you the RMS prop. RMS prop scales the gradient in a less aggressive weight. Instead of the taking the sum of the square gradients, it takes a moving average of the squared gradient. And also, RMS props is often combined the, with the momentum, which helps the model escape from the plateaus, escape to the uh, local minima, and make it uh, less susceptible to getting stuck in local minima. In its nutshell, RMS combines the benefits of the A degree and also the benefits of the momentum. And as a result, RMS pops is extremely popular nowadays. There is another very recent famous optimizer called Adams. Adams actually combines the A degrees. Uh, RMS hops and also momentum methods into one. And the directions of the steps is determined by the moving average of the gradient. And then the step size is approximately up, up bounded by the global step size. And also, furthermore, each dimension of the gradient is rescaled similar to the RMS pot. In that case, it also takes the advantage uh, from each 
of the methods that I mentioned before. One key difference between the Adams and also RMS Pops or Ada Gray is that the moment estimates and we are corrected for bias toward zero. Therefore, Adams is very well known for achieving good performance with very little hyperparameters tuning. Therefore, if you compare the Adams to RMS Pops, you can see that there will be beta 1 and beta 2 instead of just one beta because there is a moment estimates are introduced in the atoms uh, that is used to correct um, the bias towards zero. And that means it's much more easier for them to achieve good, upon, a, a good performance without uh, tuning so much in the hyperparameters. As a rules of thumbs, if the data input data is sparse, then we are much more preferred to use the adaptive learning methods, um, like uh, because it will probably uh, likely provide a better converge and also better results. However, if you have the resources to find, find a good learning rate schedule, SGD with momentums is a very, very solid choice. In that case, if you uh, you, you have a comp enough computational resources and you do not mind to have a very slow learning rate schedule and SGD momentum uh, is also a very good choice. And RMS is an extension of ADA gradients that deal with its radical diminishing learning rate. Therefore, in general, uh, if we know that um, the data is sparse, we will just use the RMS pops uh, instead of the ADA grade. Uh, Adams uh, adds the bias corrections uh, and momentums to RMS pops, and its bias corrections help Adams slightly outperform the RMS pops towards the end of the optimizations as the gradients becomes uh, sparser. So in so far, Adams uh, might be the best overall choices for the ad adaptive learning weight methods. However, if you compare, if just in case, if your data set or if the gradients do not become sparser at the end, um, the performance of Adam, Adam and the RMS pops would be quite similar. Therefore, Adams and RMS pops are very good starting points for approaching any problems.